Hello, my floss tube cross stitch friends. Welcome to my channel. My name is Amanda May, and this is my channel, Artith Design, where we celebrate all things counted cross stitch, sustainable stitching, making all the things. And of course, cutie patootie pugs. If you are new to my channel, welcome. And if you are returning, I am so happy that you came back to spend some stitchy time with me this week. I have a couple of works in progress to show you or whips. I have my wall decorated sort of almost for Halloween. I am forever the maximalist or as the term got coined last year, a grand millennial. I love it. Give me gilded frames, thrift store finds, and more equals more. <laughs> and I am a happy camper. So hopefully the pugs will cooperate while I show you some cross stitch goodies. Real quick, I will talk about the wall. Just a little cloth hanger. This right here, the witch, is just a half half the pattern of Remember Me of Birds, from, Birds of a Feather. I know it is available still. The second one is my own original design, Boo Bees Apiary, Boo Bees. <laughs> the third one is Dream. It is part of the Garden series and it's number 11, Autumn Dream. My husband got me the Hocus Pocus sign and I'm, then I've got another Halloween-y sign over yonder. <laughs> I am so excited. I. I ended up moving some of my cross stitch pieces to a dedicated sampler wall and I hope that I will be able to do a wall tour of that at some point. I've been busy decorating the house as I am homebound so I have been stitching and decorating and teaching the small little humans. <laughs> All right let's get started with stitching. I just pretty much worked on two projects this week. Uh, both of which are counterpoints to the Mayflower sample stitching that's happening across the nation and across the globe. I am not participating in the Mayflower stitching. Instead, I am celebrating the First Nations, First Peoples, Indigenous Peoples of the Americas. And that includes uh, of North America. <laughs> There's, you know, Canada, the United States, Mexico, and Central America. There are Indigenous Peoples throughout and they were doing different forms of needlework, handcrafts, so <laughs> some form of needlework for thousands of years before the Mayflower even landed. So to celebrate indigenous people and needlework, I had started one project that I showed you last week and then because I couldn't help myself, I started another one. So I've got two projects going. I started, I showed you all last week, this eagle here. It's designed by Ursula Michaels. It is the North, the Northwest series out of this vintage classic cross stitch magazine issue four, number four from September of 1991. Yes, I was in first grade. Did I have the 90s hair, yes. Did I have those stretch pants that coincidentally are back in style? Yes. All right, I have not started the Eagle, but I fell in love with the Bear Sampler. So I went onto eBay and I hit the buy it now feature and it came to my door rather, rather quickly. So I'm really excited about that. So I did buy that second in the series and it is the Bear Totem here. And I grabbed a piece of 32 count um, French country mocha that was gifted to me by Karen or Kate. Thank you, Karen. I pulled some threads that were sent to me to try out and they are a generic form, a, a generic six strand embroidery floss and it's like they're like half acrylic half cotton and I wanted to test them out so this is the piece I decided to test them out on new designer new stitching new all the new things so here we go I so I started in the center of the design and working my way kind of back and forth I heard a really really good explanation of stitching from, I believe it was Kindred Stitcher, Lisa Smith. 
she was saying that you need to whip out your algebra skills. And yes, I love math. I love math. So when she started talking algebra on X and Y axis, I'm like, oh yes, please tell me more. So if you are kind of trying to start working down and around, you want to see if you have um, two points on your X, you want to look for, you know, your X axis and your Y axis, and you can double count, um, double check your counting from two separate places when you go to add your stitch. And I thought that was a great way of explaining how to, if you're, if you're going to start stitching a motif over here or down over here, that you want to stitch, have two different places where you can count from to check and see your placement. So thank you, Lisa of Kindred Stitcher for that math recommendation for counted cross stitch. And I know many of you are going, Amanda May, of course we have to like math because it's counted. This is a counted art. <laughs> yes. One of the things too I read with cross stitch is that it says the stitching, it says nothing about what fabric or what medium. All it says is you counted cross stitch, all you need is something, a textile or a medium that you can count with. That's why you've seen people stitch on screens for windows because they've got the equidistant holes for an even weave stitch. You've seen people stitch on the, the fences, the, um, the large wall installation, cross stitch installations using the fencing. Uh, of course, then there's linen, Ada, all the good things. And my children are starting to yell, excuse me. So anyway, if you can count, <laughs> if you're counting, you can do counted cross stitch. All right, so that is the thing that I am working on. My first thought, and yes, this was an impulse buy on eBay. I could not help myself. I have it in my bag that I got from Erica House of Stars Hollow Stitchery. Last year, she made this for me. So thank you again, Erica, for my bag. I'm presumptuous. I don't even know if she watches my channel anymore. But I love my bag. <laughs> Halloween! All right, then... The second project that I worked on pretty much exclusively this week was my Sitka Stitches project. And I have that. I decided to move it into my custom project bag with my fabric that I created that you can get on Spoonflower. I know, shameless plug. Can't help myself. But you all were so kind and telling me that you like my fabric and asking me if I am going to do a Christmas fabric and I I would love to I would love some suggestions from stitchers on what you would like to see I have a I have a sampler winter noel themed fabric that I put up last year and I I don't know if it's something that anybody likes but I I am open to suggestions or themes if if anyone has one or two or four <laughs> I'm fielding requests. So in here, it's the Sitka Stitches. This is called Totem. It This is an oldie but a goodie. I really like it. I say oldie but a goodie because this is from 1982. Uh, and it's, no, no, no. You hear the lawnmower. Tis the season for the lawn, still being mowed. All right, let's see where I got. I am using a combination of Victorian Motto sampler threads, that's the turquoise, and then the DMC. And I'm already running out of the 3371 that is the, the brown black there. So I'm going to have to order another skein of that. And then I'm living dangerously here. I, I measured this before I started this project and I have like half of an inch here of clearance, but that's okay because I am going to integrate this either into some sort of wall hanging or bell pull where I'm, I might just like hand stitch it, like fold this over uh, this little thing and then just hand stitch it down to a piece. So I'm not too worried about it. I'm really excited to have this kind of, I don't want to say on the home stretch, it's what? like 21% done. <laughs> so those are the two projects that I've been working on exclusively bleh, 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 exclusively this week. And so I bought that one on eBay because I couldn't help myself. And then I got a wonderful message in, 
uh, in my inbox. It, you all can message me. Um, my email is down below. It's easier for me to get emails than it is the, um, the platform of YouTube doesn't always notify me if I have a message so there could be a delay. So if you need to talk to me or you want to shoot me a message, I do my best to respond within 24 hours. Now that I'm homeschooling, it might be 48. Give me some grace, but if you, you can always email me. Anyway, ah, I got a email from Angela and she sent me a wonderful package, very lovely. She asked me if I had heard of the Alaskan artist, um, Barbara Lovely, and I had. Uh, she, it, she illustrated a book that I read to my children so much that the book literally fell apart. It was a board book and it, the board book is called Mama, Do You Love Me? I tried to find it. I don't even know I, where it went. I think I, I stashed it somewhere to repair it. <laughs> I don't remember where I put it. But she is an artist and I I have her book. And then I was I was like, I think I have a piece of her jewelry. So I, I don't know if you all know this, but I love um, enamel pins. Clausame, Clausame, Clausame. I never know how to say that correctly. I love pins. And so... I had this one already in my collection. It's like the three women. Let me see if I can hold this. So I think I'm going to make this into a needle minder, um, the three indigenous women. And Angela sent me, oh, as I'm getting stuff all out of the way, and it, that my package smells really good. And I'll show you why it smells good in a minute. Okay, so she sent me this pattern. Look at that! Isn't that cool? They're, and it's, the title is Berry Pickers. I asked her if it would be okay if I just stitched the one or the two ladies and she said sure. Uh, so this is really cool and I am really excited to have an, another Alaskan artist to think about for this stitching right now. And she sent me a lovely note and I got, look at this. Oh my gosh, it smells so good. Her shop is called Twisted Rabbit Creations. Look at that soap. Look at how beautiful that is. Oh my gosh, look at that. And then look at this. And this is Christmas Flower Soap. Oh, thank you so much. So again, if anyone is interested in stitching uh, indigenous art, indigenous stuff uh, with me. Here is another example of Barbara Lavalie. And then I got on eBay again. And I, I got this pin by another Alaskan artist. And it is of a mother. And she is wearing her baby on her back. And I was I wore both of my babies. Um, I did baby wearing and <laughs> my wrap, I, I bring it with me in case sometimes I might need to wear, wear a baby again or a toddler. So this is by um, Ray Munez, R-I-E space M-U-N-O-Z, dated 1985. And I just love it so much. I did not see any cross stitch patterns by this artist. Um, but the back of it, I was thinking right here, I won't cover up the artist's name, but right here I will put a magnet and have this be a needle minder. And I'm really excited about that. So that is my, those are my projects that I have been working on this week. A little bit of money spending. It's been, it's been hard for me and I'll leave it at that. <laughs> okay. I designed a couple years ago the very first like, official sampler that I ever designed and I have learned a lot about finishing since that first design first ish design um yeah so I decided to go ahead and refinish this this is my pumpkin pie spice sampler pumpkin pie as in slices of pie, P-I-E, as well as pi, the mathematical constant, 3.14. Right now is pumpkin 
pie spice season, whether you drink it in your coffee, your creamer, you eat it in your donuts, you have the lip gloss scent, you wear the shirts that say it, or conversely, you can't stand the season, you loathe it with a passion, but you still want to celebrate it. So this is my ode to pumpkin spice everything plus a nod to math with counted cross stitch. This, I mounted it on, I laced it. So I took it off. I had it pinned on a foam core board where it still had the pins, but see, I pinned it and did all of that a couple years ago before I found a frame, realizing that, that a custom six by eight frame for this pattern is pretty expensive. So I never had it professionally framed. So I thought I would redo it and I laced, I took, I took all the pins out. If you're pinning a piece, use the rust free sequin pins or um, dressmakers pins. They should specifically say like stainless steel or rust free. I pulled out all the pins. I cut a new piece of mat board, um, six inches by eight inches across. I sent my husband out to Michael's where he bought me this frame. It had glass. I removed the glass. So this is a uh, six by eight. This is an eight by 10 frame. Then I used an acid free piece of a scrapbook paper with the pumpkin. I had laced it, got the, the, and then I glued it. I used the Aileen's tacky glue and I glued the, the back of the piece to the scrapbook paper. Once it was all dry, I then put it in the frame. Again, this is just the basic, like a basic Michaels frame. And then I just, just really gently, carefully just put some leaves, nothing fancy, just mounted it. And just, so here is another idea for framing a piece. If you, you want to lace it, but you don't, you want to have your stitches look beautiful, but you don't or can't afford. I can't afford a custom frame. I can't. <laughs> so a 8x10 Michaels frame. And Michaels is a chain of craft stores here in the United States. I'm not sure of the equivalent overseas what that is. Um, so anyway, I and I also liked that the frame loosely matched the frame that I got off of Amazon, which was... Um, 11 by 11 inch frame for my autumn dream. I'm just like pointing out into the bit, into the abyss. Hey, sweetie, are you okay? Yeah, okay, here, I'm just moving you a little bit. Okay, I, since I'm all done showing you my official stitching this week, I did wanna share with you one of my other secret cross stitch collections. There has been talk that in the cross stitch community, there are two different passions, collecting all the things, stitching all the things and doing both collecting it all and stitching it all. Well, in this segment of what more does Amanda may have in her home? Yeah. Maximalist. Hi. <laughs> I, okay. Yeah. Hi. I want to share um, some of the Danish Handcraft Guild pieces that um, collection um, patterns that I have been collecting. I've yet to stitch any of them, but I have them for when I start stitching them. Before I show you that, I wanna do a little uh, side comment, sidebar. Using the Boyle yarn needles, <laughs> my son, my three-year-old son, wants to learn how to stitch and cross stitch. I think I've told you he loves to quilt. I brought the quilt back out. He, we did this one together. I do the scissor, like I cut the sharp stuff. He does all the age appropriate things like push the pedal and like guide the fabric and pick the fabric and tell me where to lay things down, all the, you know. Anyway, so I couldn't find my just typical hole punch with the little circles. I could find my heart one. So I made just little things on a piece of, like a mailer piece. And then he used, he tried the acrylic fillion from Sulky. He did two strands. He wanted to do the purple. And then he did one strand with the cotton. He wanted to do green. 
And then he was he was done. He's like, that was great. But he he figured out the, the rhythm and I, I'm very proud of him. So day one of learning how to hand stitch my three-year-old. I'm excited. Mama's happy. Okay, let's talk Danish handcraft guilt. So I want to show you some of these books. I will tell you that all of these books I have collected over time. Um, thrift stores, estate sales, you know, that type of thing. I got one on eBay. I paid very little for it because it literally is falling apart. So we'll start with that one. All right. This, I really like Gerda's patterns here. So cross stitch patterns in color. And it's got a collection of cute little scenic things as well as lots of rose patterns. And I love the roses. I think they're so pretty. So half this book is literally all different types of roses. But I wanted to show you <laughs> the people. Uh, so as many of the historic, not historic, but many of the sampler, some of these little books, they'll show the close up of the pattern. And then on the other side is the the close up of the of the completed stitch and then on the other side is the corresponding pattern. So this one I thought was really precious and I really liked the use of the trees in this. And this one is called mushroom picking. So cute. And then the next piece that I really like from this um is that literally the book is falling apart. Where'd it go? Well, never mind. The book is falling apart on me. <laughs> Going and picking out your trees for winter, for Christmas, or whatever holiday that you are celebrating. So this is a really cool book. Then there's a, like a series in here of um, different plants in the window, like in the window box. So this is really cute. I really like the work of Gerda. I don't know if any of these have been reprinted. Um, or what the estate or something is of this stuff. But that is cross stitch patterns in color. Yep, Danish Handcraft Guild. The next piece, I think these are really cute. They're tiny little booklets. Um, I don't know, again, yard sale, estate sale, thrift store. But they've got the really cool, there's like the border botanicals dandelion and then it has like really cool the floral stuff I liked I, I like all of these red berries really really fun and this one is neat because it's got it's got the different borders including that violet border and then it's got the little samplers because who doesn't love a mermaid so this is Danish design Copenhagen. The next one is another pattern by Gerda, the great uh, Danish floral. So I just, I like all these florals. I've seen a lot of accounts on Instagram, um, people overseas, like in Japan, do a lot of these floral motifs. I think they're really pretty. The book is in black and white, so the the pretty much the photos that you see are the ones that are on the cover. The next one I think is kind of fun. This one is a Danish cross stitch and zodiac sampler kit, uh, sampler book. This one is so random because it mixes so astrology, cross stitch, and then random likes from the 1990s. And, I mean, who doesn't want to combine all of those things? For instance, here for Aquarius, you can stitch the glove and the boot and the time. Well, I guess this is, you know, pocket watch, not too bad. Here, you know, your champagne, your champagne glass with the traditional motif here. The Christmas one, I thought was, I think that one is the, 
I, that's my favorite out of this book is the Christmas one. The <laughs> Pisces, the crocus border is really pretty. And then there's just like random instruments. Oh, where's the car one? Yeah. Okay. So Virgo, look at this. So stitch that sampler with the car, the horse, the tree, and then the traditional. I've seen this book pretty inexpensively um, on eBay. I like this one, the Leo with the poppies. So the border, they, they all look like they're the same. You could mix and match the insert inside motifs, but the borders are really gorgeous. And then all of them have the different, your Zodiac sign up at the top. So this is by, this is a Dover Needlework series book. And I think it's really fun. <laughs> it is totally random. 19, excuse me, 1980. I said 1990s, but 1980, excuse me. And again, these are mostly, it's all done in hand, um, hand charting and black and white. This one is a hard to find book. Please don't be mad at me for showing it. No, I'm not selling it, but I'm showing it because I can't help myself. It is the Herbs and Medicinal Plants in Cross Stitch book. This is one of the first ever books that I found what, five, six, seven years ago and immediately loved it. I think this is what turned me on to the Danish Handcraft Guild and their work. And then Blue Horse Yellow Cow, she continued, see, she enabled me more. Uh, she's another Floss Tube channel. Um, so I marked a couple to show you. Musk Mallow here. What I like about this is that, so there's, the, it gives you the medicinal qualities of the plant and why it's important. There's the woody night, sh oh, Uh, the Woody Nightshade that's on the cover. I really like that one. And then this one is Time. Never enough time. That design. I love that. People have it over their kitchen. But the Time. Time. So really, really beautiful book. And then last but not least is Wildflower Designs for Needlework. This is an interesting book. There are photos in here that do, that do not match. Oh, I'll just show you. So I love this book. And the reason I got this book, um, I, I really love this right here. So all of these other, these are all, all the other designs in the book. But you wanna know something? This is not in my copy. <laughs> <laughs> this pattern is not in this copy of this book. Um, I don't know if there's another print reprint or what. But interestingly, I got this book, Wildflower Designs for Needlework. Again, lovely book, lovely uh, pictures and projects. Again, all hand charted. And then there's even uh, information about the different flowers and illustrations. Here, you know, the completed stitches. And yes, you can see the, the dating of the pieces on the botanical pillows with the lace. But you can modernize, you can always modernize these patterns. But what I thought was really interesting is that inside this book was handwritten color coding directions and corrections and a handwritten note from the author regarding the, thank you for giving me a chance to make these corrections. So if anyone <laughs> buys this book and wants the copy of the corrections, I have it. <laughs> How cool is that? Anyway, that to show you, number one, it's a cool book, okay? Beautiful designs. Number two, don't be too hard on yourself. We all make mistakes and mistakes can be published. There's publishing errors all the time just roll with it and give yourself some grace. So those are my suggestions. Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to kick the camera. All right. That is my week in cross stitching. I want to thank you all for joining me this week. I'm done stick talking about stitching. If you want to skedaddle, 
Uh, if not, I have a few things I'll share. Okay. Uh, hi, baby. We started week two of homeschool and the kids are doing really well. We read the book, um, How to Make an Apple Pie and See the World. And then at the end of it, we made an apple pie last week. This week, we started reading a book that uh, has been considered controversial, uh, given the author's treatment of um, Native American and Indigenous people. But we started reading The um, Little House in the Big Woods. And I'm explaining to my kids that this was written in a different time period and talking about westward expansion and imperialism, and, but also talking about uh, looking at it through the lens of, you know, young children who are getting uh, the, the book's premise of, you know, getting ready for winter and how hard things were and how different things are. And let's talk about the juxtaposition between 2020 and back in the settler days. Uh, of westward expansion in the United States. So we started reading that book yesterday. We made from scratch whole wheat honey bread. I didn't grind the flour so it wasn't totally from scratch. But both children, oh this is taking forever. I'm like, could you imagine doing that without electricity, running water, and having to burn with you know go cut down the tree and then burn the logs you know talking about homesteading um so just that's what i have been up to and thank you all for your kindness and your lovely thought loving thoughts regarding um homeschooling i'm learning a lot i am checking out a lot of books the library is awesome i, I encourage all of you to see if your libraries offer um, pickups during this time, digital resources. I've said before, RB Digital, check and see if your library sponsors that application. I read Piecework Magazine uh, and several of the quilting magazines for free through that app, through uh, my library, having a library card. So there are lots of resources out there. I know many of you are homebound like I am. Um, please know that you are not alone and we're all doing the best we can. <laughs> uh, the pugs are doing really well, um, walking them and the kids are doing well. So I, I, I don't know what else to say other than thank you so much for joining me this week and talking about some, I don't want to say controversial, but some, some different subjects with me. Uh, please know that I truly appreciate you. I am not here to upset anyone and please know that I come from a place of love and I just sending lots of love to you. Uh, please know that you matter. Please know that your stitching matters. Don't let anyone ever take the joy of stitching away from you. And in these troubling times, it's hard enough if you can um, find joy in your craft, whether you are crocheting and knit, knitting, quilting, hand appliquing, cross stitching, whatever you are doing that brings joy and comfort to your life, keep on doing it. And because you matter and don't don't let anyone tell you otherwise and if you need if you need to hear that you matter you just listen to the end of my videos and I'm gonna tell you that you matter and I love you and have a great week of stitching and I'll talk to you soon